welcome to another episode of the Dragon Yawn. I'm your host, Sifu Mike, and I'm here with Lama. And here is actually Lama's personal um, calligraphy studio. Okay, which is very appropriate because we're talking about language and different terms and stuff, and it all actually meaning the same thing. But we're going to align you with that, and we're going to do it from inside this beautiful calligraphy studio where he does a lot of really cool stuff. We'll address that in more detail in a later episode. But I've just given you some context because I'm going to be opening up to this man, Lama. All right, the man of Tai Chi himself is going to be talking to you about all this kind of stuff. We're going to be referring to and discussing the differences and similarities between internal and external martial arts, the uh, Nigan, Wigan, um, hard, soft, all these things that are actually kind of the same. Okay, and for me, being a mixed martial artist, we. Uh, the biggest challenge I've run into is the fact that the human body can only move in so many different ways, right? So a lot of the stuff you see is going to be the exact same. It's just going to be called different names. And like I have the hardest time finding the correct name for the technique or just having a technique that has like six different names. And apparently that's not exclusive to just mixed martial arts. That's in a lot of different things. And we're going to be talking about that today to hopefully give you a better understanding of martial arts and how it is represented in culture and how you really should be looking at it and the person who's going to enlighten us about that is this man who's super knowledgeable so i'm going to leave it to lama how are you doing sir i'm doing good i'm doing good michael i always enjoy your introductions oh yes, yes. You gotta, they, they, gotta have I, i'm looking around for the guy you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry good but yeah so yeah so leaving that to hey. To you guys and if, if you're leading me into it your last one of your last terms was culture and that brings me to another thing but i consider i really i believe this is why i have this studio this is why i have a sat i have four saturdays four this is usually four saturdays in a month i have four seminars on saturdays and one of them is calligraphy and i have that because first of all the art, the painting art form in Asia, Japan and uh, Korea and, and uh, China is very connected to the martial art. And you wouldn't think that. No one would. In our culture, the, the, those are two separate arts. And, and if they're in shopping centers, they're at one end of the shopping center and there's a little hole over for the martial right. art on this one. You know what I mean? So you, 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 they're not, they're not anywhere near thought of it as being connected, but they are connected because when it comes to the principles of movement or the or principles of the art, they're the same. You, you just, the breathing is the same. The stances are the same. You usually, these tables are not high enough, but you usually, the Chinese stand up and do this. And the, and the, the training I had in China was in a school where the you know the tables you stood at the tables and you you made the the brush go you didn't sit we always sit because we don't have to do enough tall tables anyway you can't stand it but you you do where you stand and you do calligraphy you're using your whole body like you would do in a form it, uh, same, same it's so close it's incredible uh so you so these the, the, the culture is something that I firmly believe, and going and living in China and studying, is something that you really have to know. That's a big, that's a part and parcel of the art. With your concern with martial art, teaching it and doing it and, and training in it, and uh, I had been for so long in Tai Chi, just with the art form itself. But you really, uh, I think, it's so important that we know more about the culture that our art comes from you, you have no idea until you, you do know that right and you were telling me that you started way back in the 70s in um uh, uh, right outside dc right with is when you started with the, your whole martial art journey the training the, the, the yeah, tra training yeah, started and that my, led you to china the, my my training started in norfolk virginia and uh a friend of mine he knew I, I had I had I had been introduced to Tai Chi in New York City at the school of William C. C. Chen, who is still uh, he's a grandmaster today, and, and he's uh, 
He's still living and he's still teaching. But I knew him when he was a young guy. He was only a few years older than I am. I didn't say that, but uh, we're two old guys. But uh, uh, William, uh, I was introduced to this art and I had no idea what it was. But the fr two friends of mine who took me to his school, they were students, and I was influenced by their enthusiasm for it. And I, I really, I just wanted to study this. I, I wanted it, what I saw, I kind of understood in a funny way, uh, in, in a deep way. And I wanted, without no, I didn't even know it was a martial art. And, and so many people today in America don't know it's a martial art. And some of the greatest teachers of Tai Chi in America wouldn't teach it as a martial art. So it wasn't, it could not have been Tai Chi Chuan. You couldn't say Tai Chi Chuan because Chuan means martial art. If you leave martial art out of it completely, consciously, you're not teaching the martial part. So consequently, it's it's some other kind of art. Right. And uh, uh, the the uh, I I started. This was 1964. 1970 is when I actually started training in a form, a martial art, a Tai Chi Chuan form. So that was almost 50 years ago that I started actual training. Five years after that, I was in China. After we had opened it up to the Nixon, I don't know if you remember that or not, but the, the Nixon thing, do you? No, not really. No. No, 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 just, I, I think some yeah. people might be worried if I did. Yeah, no, but no. no, you should actually, you know, we all should, but we don't. We, we, we don't spend the time studying the history and the culture of where our arts come from. Boxing, American boxing is English boxing. That's our culture. That, that, you know, you, there's so much that you still can t can explore about it, but it's something that we're familiar with. But Filipino boxing is from Fil the Philippines. Taekwondo is from Korea. Karate is from uh, Japan. Kung Fu, which we call Wushu, the Chinese martial art, is from China. We And each of those places are different. They, they have different ways of doing the same, you know, this art. And there's different meanings to things. I just came across something today on Facebook. Uh, That's right, folks. He's on Facebook. You can look him up and friend him. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And I got links to that afterwards. Well. Yeah. Th there's a lot more politics on, <laughs> on Facebook. You might, you might want to leave me alone on Facebook. But. Okay, folks. Leave him alone. <laughs> I got a good... I got a good... Uh, uh, Black Bamboo Pavilion is on Facebook, and okay. I, I try to keep that martial okay. art. Find them, <laughs> not him. <laughs> Black Bamboo Pavilion. Okay, back to what so you where saying. we were. You, where say, where you we? say you found something cool on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, it had to do with the name of a posture, and the posture is called White Crane Cools Its Wings in okay. Chinese, the, if you translate the Chinese characters. And this particular it was just a little article. It called it White Crane Spreads Its Wings. Well, that's what's more familiar to me because that's what I learned that this posture was called 50 years ago. But that was a translation of the Chinese characters. And the translator mm, didn't, didn't really... Uh, he wasn't paying attention to what the Chinese call it. And because the, the, the posture is one way, the arms spread, it looks like that the, the, when, you, when you execute it, it looks like the, uh, the, the crane is, is spreading its wings. But the name is not spread, it's cools. Now that's a very different name. So the Chinese name, when you, when you substitute an American translation for just a Chinese name of a posture, or a Japanese, now the Japanese term would be the same. The, char the, the, uh, the, the, the sound of the word would be very different, but the character, if they use the Chinese character, would be the same character. And that character happens to mean cool. So, it, it, we, I, come, I come across it all the time, the, the thing about the culture and the language. And you don't need to be able to speak the language fluently, but you need to know how to consult a dictionary, a, a, a Chinese, English, Chinese, Chinese, English dictionary. Right. And that gets into a little bit more study than, you know, rolling around on the mats and things. But, you know, when, you say, when you're interested in, in Tai Chi, when people are interested in a form, and they're usually for health, 
And, and I've got to say that it is a very healthful exercise. But if you can, so is rolling around on the mats. <laughs> you know, I mean, exercise is getting out and doing something rather than sitting in front of the TV right, right. You know, as a couch potato. So uh, uh, the, the, old, the older uh, senior Americans that I have taught uh, over the years, and I taught a class at Duke uh, Diet, uh, not Diet, I, I substituted at Duke Diet and Fitness, which is for people having mainly uh, hip, hip and joint replacements and things like that. But diet because they you know, they they need to uh, uh, lose excessive weight, and that causes problems with joints right. and stuff. But uh, the uh, Duke Center for Living is where I had a class for like 15 years, and it was basically for old people. And they were sent by doctors or referred by someone. And, uh, uh, you know, any, any movement would have helped them. You know, Tai Chi particularly is, is good. But they, then they got to learn something which is also good for mind-body coordination and, and work, just to work your mind. But it's not, uh, you, you don't learn Tai Chi when you're 80. You, you learn it when you're about 45 so that when you get 80, people don't mess with you in the street, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't want to mess with a Chinese. Is and if a Chinese has a cane... Oh, I was about do, to say that. I was do, like, I've learned this thing where I, when I was researching just how to fight with a cane, one of the things that kept popping up was the quote, beware old men with canes. Oh, yeah. 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 So old this women. Is good. Well, yeah, beware yeah. old yeah. women. Don't try to take an old woman's bag out of her. If she got... Anyway, you don't want to take an old... You don't want to mess with an oriental lady in a bag. Just don't, because you have no idea what she has. But if she has a stick in her hand or a cane, just leave her alone. You right, know, right. there's other marks out there. I wouldn't go for the old lady. I wouldn't. And don't go with me. I always got a cane. And yeah, it's true. It's got one right here. Yeah, it's just, it's just. I don't want to wave it around in here. But yeah, uh, and people ask me, "What do you use Tai Chi?" Well, and that's the end of martial art when I usually say that. And I have as a deterrent. And it's like uh, whenever I'm out in the street, you know, in terror of the public, I'm armed. I'm armed with a, with a, a weapon. Uh, and the weapon is one that uh, you could take anywhere. And I, I took a weapon on airplanes, uh, always. Uh, and I did a lot more traveling in the... Uh, uh, turn of the century, in the 90s and the, and the aughts, than I have uh, since, for sure. Uh, but, you know, whenever I would go there, I'd always have a cane. And even now, when I'm, when I'm out about town, if I have to get out of the car in a parking lot and go into places, I always take a cane with me. You get sympathy, you get help. I mean, it's a, it's a very useful in instrument, yeah. really, it really is. Yeah, they... But when it comes to, uh, and, and I have used it uh, with... Uh, uh, you know, just somebody, somebody just mess with, hey man, hey man, hey man, hey, hey, stop that, stop that. And I go, what? And I take the cane, throw it over, you know, just, and then, oh, never mind. And they, you know, they'll turn around and go away. And that's happened to me several times. Uh, and it's harder to do, you know, it's harder to do this with your hands. Uh, I say, oh yeah, well, I know Kung Fu too, you know. Uh, but no, when you got a stick in your hand, and you, it looks like you know what you're doing with it, you know, just... You're confident you got it. And if, and, and if I don't even show that, I'm confident that I can get a lick in no matter what somebody wants to do. I can do one thing, perhaps. Yeah, they're going to go away. You know, they're going to go away. I say, well, I killed him, but damn, I think I, I, think I broke my knee there. I think he broke my knee with that stick. So I'm tied it up. Anyway, this is bullshitting, so let's get on with, <laughs> with the show. Yeah. Yeah. Where were we? We were um, discussing the differences in the languages and as far as internal and external hard soft uh, these kind ah. of notions and where you really should begin where you, you should end you mentioned that um, tai chi is, is more for people to start learning especially around age 45 and so um before that in martial arts in, in martial arts in, yeah. yeah yeah and 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 uh and, and see again in China, a big, oh, a big revelation to me was how much the martial art is woven into the cultural fabric of that country, of, those, of that people. 
and it, I, I could, it, it would take me an hour to try to explain that. But when you're there, you start to realize it. And I, I've got a, a master's degree in, in Asian, particularly Chinese, history and culture. And I started to understand it. I mean, I started to get introduced to it there with the books that I should have been reading uh, and things. But I still didn't quite know it until I got to China and could see firsthand in the streets, little kids, old men, sitting down. They used to have these, uh, at, at, when I, in, the seven, uh, in the 80s, they had these little libraries in the street. And they had these little paperback, they're like the uh, 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 comic books. But what do you, what do you yeah. call it? Uh, graphic, graphic, graphic novels. Yeah. Yes. And and they had the f the 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 four first big, what, what they call it popular, the popular novels. But they were the first novels that were written for the common people. And uh, one was Outlaws of the Marsh, and that has a hundred and eight outlaws in it. You know, it's like all of the all of the cowboy outlaws in the in our in our culture wrapped up in one particular movement. You know, mm -hmm. and the, uh, and 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 another one is the, the Three Kingdoms, and you see that a lot on television, in uh, in in, the, in Chinese. We call them kung fu movies, but mm -hmm. Chinese movies, they're historical movies, but the Three Kingdoms is one you see a lot. You mm -hmm. see excerpts of things that happen in, in the book. Well. Little kids know there are four of them. One is a romance called uh, uh, Dream of the Red Chambers or the Red Mansions. And another is Journey to the West, which is the Monkey King goes to, uh, goes to India and brings back the sacred scriptures and things of Buddhism. But those four books, little kids know them. And they read them because they have all the things. The, the, the Monkey King is all like science fiction kind of stuff to little kids. Yeah, the monkeys fly and they turn into humans and all that kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. You, 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 know, you know, we have some idea of those. Again, through movies. If you watch Chinese movies, that, that all these themes and these things keep coming up. You, you don't really realize it unless you know what they're referring to. And that has to do with names of things, or, or just martial art things. Some of the names of martial art things refer to these literary uh, uh, creations that the Chinese know instinctively. They know they know what you're referring to and where you're going with it. And we don't, so we can we can change it and make other names out of it because we don't understand where the hell it comes from in the first place. Right. And it could be something as simple as changing spread, a changing cool to spread. And, and on that other that posture I was talking about, uh, I, I had a discussion with a knowledgeable guy one time, and he called it "White Crane Dries Its Wings," and I said, w w how, "Why do you call it dry? I mean, is that you know?" I was I was thinking of the character, w what character? And, and yeah, I don't I don't remember. He said, "Well, what he said was, well, you know, when a, when you." Uh, you see pictures of these birds that do the diving and catch fish and bring them back to the yeah. guy in the boat. And then they get up and they dry their wings, you know, before they go, go back again and stuff like that. And that, that's a plausible explanation if you don't know, right. you know, what the character really is. And then again, maybe he, maybe he had a character that said dry, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, maybe he just saw somebody doing posture and interpreted that. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think people do that all the time. Yeah. They just they see someone doing a particular movement, and they just kind of interpret the name from that because they don't have the clear translation. And and, and and that's and that's you know that that is a good thing to do, but if you knew the culture, you wouldn't have to try to right. explain that away. But if you if you say, well, I, I just want to name it that, okay, well, name what you want to name. What we're doing in America with both kung fu and tai chi. It is our, it's our, our form now. It's our martial art now. Once, once it gets here, we change it into our culture anyway. It's trying to get into our culture. So we don't care about the culture it comes from. Too and, bad. And you're saying that the Kung Fu of China means something entirely different than what it means in the U.S. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is a good one, guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we know Kung Fu from... Uh, 
David Carradine the role, yeah. which yeah. it should have been Bruce Lee's role, I think. Isn't that yeah, it should have yeah. been Bruce Lee's role. Thing. And and Bruce Lee wouldn't have made that mistake. I think I think he would have. They wouldn't have wanted him on that show. <laughs> but then again, he was starting out, so maybe he would have followed along. But uh, the, it, that's a good sounding Chinese name, and it does mean, as like as you said, it means something to do with skill, skills, a high level. A particular way of attaining that art and keeping it, whatever it may be, or a or, 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 or skill or an art, and somebody who's really, really good at it, chainsaw, you know, art. I mean, Jesus, how the hell can they do that with a chainsaw? But they do. Well, that's a, that's a high level in that art. But in China, where it's used, it, it, as we use Kung Fu, we throw it off. In China, it's used for a chef in a restaurant who brings out these dishes, you know, they, they're big, ten courses. And man, you say, you know, he has to come out and everyone, you know, uh, uh, claps for him and praises him and tells him, oh, Kung Fu, Kung Fu, how ah, Kung Fu, you know. He's got good Kung Fu. And, and they don't pronounce the K, by the way, and that has to do with language translating into English as a transliteration system. And you, we, you, it, even when it's spelled in China, the Chinese don't, they don't read the English anyway. They don't need to. But when, they, when that word is said in China, it's not K. They don't pronounce the K. That means it's a hard G. So it's still pronounced good. The pronounce is the same. Gong Fu is Gong Fu, no matter what it's, what it's written in English. Right. You know, transliterations, that's another whole thing, but that's a code. And the code is how do you translate these sounds from a foreign language into our sounds? And you've got to know the code. And there's, there's several different codes on writing Chinese in English. Two big ones. Wei Giles, this is an English system that was developed in the 19th century. And the modern pinyin that's, to, that's developed in, uh, in China from uh, 1949. And those two systems, you have to know the, uh, my, my, my English students in China would say, uh, oh, something like, oh, our system better, our system better. Well, why is it better? I just says, it says, it says what we say. So I said, okay, what are you talking about? Okay, so, Tai Chi Chuan, Tai Chi Chuan. And, and what there, at that time, when, when, when I was there, they were used to our, our English for their, for like Kung Fu, they would they would be used to seeing our English representation of their terms. So they say Tai Ji Chuan, and in the Pinyin it's spelled T A I J I, and that's that's closer to the pronunciation of Tai Ji. In in the older system it was T apostrophe A I. And with the apostrophe after a, a letter, or two letters, meant that you pronounce it as it is spelled in English. So you would pronounce the T. But if it was T-A-O, you don't pronounce it Tao. You pronounce it Tao. It's a hard T. Okay. So, that's, so you have to know, what does that little, right, right. What does that little apostrophe mean? It means you pronounce it differently, but we don't know that. So that's okay for Thai, but the CHI doesn't have an apostrophe in that system, which means it's a hard sound. So it's not Chi, it's not Tai Chi, and Tai Chi sounds uh, ex very acceptable to us because it has to do with Chi. So this is the, 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 the big energy thing. But it got to do with chi. It has to do with extremes. It has to do with, with other things. But it's the spelling. And the spelling comes... I'm getting all excited, aren't I? Yeah, you just... got to calm down. It's all right. Did you bring any opium or anything? Yeah, yeah, I got coffee. You got, <laughs> I always have coffee. That does, yeah, that'll yeah, buzz yeah. me out. Okay. So, so I, I, don't, I don't carry this out too far. I guess I'm not really crazy. But... But then I would say to my students, okay, so the tai, tai G is the way you really pronounce it. But what about Q-U-A-N? How do you pronounce that? 
And they say, Quan, Chuan. I say, well, we would pronounce it Quan. We would pronounce the Q. In English, how, how do you pronounce a, a word with Q in it? You don't pronounce it Ch. You don't yeah, pronounce yeah. it Chuan. In any in any reference like that, right? Right. So it's a but you got to know in like Pinyin, an X is a sh sound. Okay. It's not it's yeah. it's not an X sound. How do you pronounce? I got an X on the end of my name. You know? Right. You don't pronounce that. Uh, yeah. No. When I when I when I was being brought up and very young, my grandmother said when I was learning to to, to write and read, she said, you know, I was writing my name, and she said, you know, you don't. That, that X is like the P in swimming. I look at it, I go, P in swimming, swimming, S W I M M I N. Meme, there's, there's no P in swimming. <laughs> she laughed. And then it took me, you know, a couple of years before somebody hit me to the fact that, you know, that, that was a joke. <laughs> so, but, you know, we don't, we, don't pronounce, we don't pronounce Q's, we don't pronounce X's, but they have it written. Huh? Right. X I is, is she. It's not X I or something, you know. Right, right. All right. So, so, so the, the thing about the culture, the one thing that we all should know, if we're doing Chinese martial art, and the same goes for Korean and Japanese, you gotta at least know how to pronounce the names of of the terms, the words, and you gotta know to at least pronounce their, or your art's name correctly, right? Right. And if you don't know, and you say you, you're, you're practicing Tai Chi Chuan, well, the Chinese will look at you and say, this is a stupid guy, because there's no Chi there. You don't pronounce it like that. So that's the end of that. What, what else? Where do we go from here? So well, let's start with the, what does actually Tai Chi Chuan, uh, tai Chi Chuan translate to? Oh, well. Because you, you told me that. I thought that was very interesting. The, the, you, what you have to do is you have to look at the characters. In each character, uh, you know, there, there are different definitions uh, of that, uh, examples of that uh, particular character in English. So, the character for Tai, T-A-I, would be, we usually translate it as great. Uh, the G is, it's, like, it's hard to explain, but it, it extremes or, uh, or I, I remember when I first tried to understand that and it kept coming up about a ridgepole holding up the structure of the world or something. And that was a little hard for me to grasp my head around. Uh, but it's like the yin yang symbol. That, that you know that that's that rolling right always revolving symbol of you know the white and the black with all the things that they represent and then within each are the same you know the little circle and the white is the black and then the black is the white and then they go around and around and that cosmic dance kind of thing that's what the g is like and and if you if you think extremes that, that's the best translation in english that I can fall on, fall back on. But it's like the, the extreme, so it's yin and yang. That's, that's where the yin yang comes in in, the, uh, in, in all of martial art. And a, a hard stylist, and that hard style is another is like another term for, uh, we were talking about wai gong and nei gong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wai gong, wai, that character, that, that term means outside outside the body, uh, outside the country, outside. And nay means inside, inside the country, inside the body, inside. In the martial art, we, we, we call it, we, 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 we call hard style and soft style. What are the different terms we use? Hot, soft style, hard style, soft style, uh, Kung Fu and Tai Chi, for instance. Uh, external, internal, that that we use that in the martial art quite a bit, right? External right, right, right. art, internal. Well, what does that mean? What's what's an external art? What's an internal art? That, that's that's that, that's the crux of the matter right there. What do they mean? What yeah. do you, what, what do they mean to you? 
They mean something very specific. Can I read something? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I did. I, 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 I set this up particularly. Yes. And, and, and most of what I'm talking about and trying to wrap my my tongue around, very difficult. Uh, what, the, 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 this is the Tao of Taiji Chen. Uh, story it, time with Lama, guys. Start, start, start reading. Yeah, okay. The Tao of Taiji Chen, way, way to rejuvenation. You can't read that. Zhou Tsung Hua. Okay, and, 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 I, and Zhou Tsung Hua, I met him through Jay Dunbar, Dr. J. 1981. I've studied with him. Uh, I, I, I've got to know him. Uh, if you know him at all, he considers you a friend. You consider him a friend, a mentor. And and uh, he, he was uh, he he died in 1998 tragically uh, in an automobile accident. But uh, he he wrote this book and several others, the Tao of Taiji Chuan. And and here's the thing with the, what I was talking about the transliteration system, because we would pronounce that the Tao of Tai Chi Chuan. Right. Okay. And the two words, the two important words, would be wrong. Would be these two, right? yeah. because you, this is not you don't pronounce it. It's, it's spelled in this way, T A O, but it's really and, and in the Pinyin it's a D A O. So when you see D A O, you say, "Well, that's Dao. I can pronounce that. Right. It's right. And it's yeah, closer." Yeah. So the the systems, uh, they're codes, and and the whole, and any one code can't have all of the uh, correct equivalents. Of a sound, for instance. But anyway, anyway, the way the Tao of Taiji Chuan, the way to rejuvenation, and what he wrote, and I, I, I think when I first met him in 1981, this book just came out, was just published, and I have a, you know, the first publication signed by Mr. Joe, which is very, very, very yeah, yeah. one of my few literary gems that I have acquired, but. What he talks about here, uh, it, it, later this book came out and they were, uh, this may be the fifth or sixth edition or something, but when they came out in later editions, he had added these in the beginning of the books, where he called here, I think they might be called letters, and either letters or prefaces. This is called prefaces. So this is the preface to the fourth edition, and it's the 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 uh, the. The preface is entitled, uh, there's a master key. It's, it's about master key. It's about breakthroughs. So the master key and the breakthrough, the master key, the master key. But the breakthrough, he goes on and he talks about hand method. This is, this is the terms that I use. Because I use his terms. Torso method and mind method. And what he said about these, okay, I, I, that's what I want to read rather than me keep saying them and you thinking I know what I'm talking about. I think you do know what you're talking what about. I, I, just repeating what you've read. I, I, yeah, what I've tried to absorb over many, many yeah. years. And, you know, you, you, you're a young man, you're about 30 years old. and uh, 35. Uh, I'm telling, I'm talking, I'm telling. This. <laughs> 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 but, but, Okay, even you're, though, even you're though, right, I'll be even 30. Though a, very, a very famous teacher told me one time, when the master speaks, <laughs> when I, it's not an invitation to a dialogue, you know, it's just you listen to it. If you record, you record, do your job. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh God, okay, so uh, what, do you, what, do you, what is, leads up to is stages of development and these breakthroughs. And he talks about... Uh, he distinguishes between two kinds of breakthroughs. The lesser is the personal milestone of which there can be many. Now, let's take a t in, in martial art training, during martial art training. There are many personal milestones. You have them. Oh, you reach a level and you go, oh, my God, I'm getting good at this. I know now what uh, uh, Albert, Albert uh, used to teach at your school. Black guy taught boxing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 that's old. Oh, school. he yeah. knew. God, he yeah. knew some stuff. And every time he would try to get something across, and he, you know, he would just, yeah, well, you guys don't know it when you get there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You ain't got there yet, or something. But uh, the two exam, uh, and then he said, the, 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 the lesser is the personal milestone, and the greater marks the boundaries between three major developmental stages, which define 
Anyway, the road to true mastery in martial art. Each of the three major stages is characterized by a method. Martial artists in the first stage use hand method. Those in the second stage use torso method. And in the third stage use mind method. And uh, although there are many lesser breakthroughs are possible within each stage, the transition from hand to torso, from torso to mind method, are distinct requiring a major breakthrough, or what is sometimes termed a quantum leap. Lesser breakthroughs are individual experiences and will vary widely. widely. The greater breakthroughs, however, will be very similar to all who pass from one stage to the next. Most, artists, most martial artists remain in the first stage. Most martial artists remain in the hand method stage. Very few reach the second stage. Classical stories, the Japanese guy I was talking about, the judo master, he had transitioned probably into the third. But most, no matter how good they are, or how many titles they have in front of the name, grandmaster, super grandmaster, great super great master, you know, all those titles, mm -hmm. they're still hand method. They're good with hand method, but you can sit back and say, they're just going to get, that's going to weaken because they're getting older. You can't keep it up. Even steroids, steroids just turn you into a horse or something. I don't know. Uh, I mean, so, I just know your head gets big and you your balls get small. And your feet so. do. <laughs> yeah. That's what I hear too. That's what I hear too. It's not true in this house, but that's what I, that's what I hear. Most martial artists remain in the first. A few reach the second. Classical stories tell us of those who have attained the third stage, but I know of no one today who has reached it, the, the mind stage. And I, I'll say this, living in China, I have. That's the one thing I would dispute with uh, my mentor here, <coughs> Joseph Wong. And... But again, a lot of what you see, you see magicians doing things. Is that real? Nah, it can't be real. It sure look real, you know? And the same with a lot of martial artists. You see what they do and you say, what is that? And a lot, a lot of the time, most of the time, it's fake. So, I, I, I'm thinking of one, one young man in China who who attain one of those things that are kind of magical. And he was a young guy, he was a manager of a bank. We had to go, I, I worked in, in university, we had to go to a bank once a month to get uh, a big box of Chinese paper money turned into American money or whatever. And he knew that I did, he found out that one, I only did it once a month, but one, one, he found out that I did Tai Chi with his teacher, uh, Grandfather Din. And he, he, he came around into the, into the, you know, the, not the lobby, but the area, the space between the, the counters. And all of his all of his workers, they all got up on the counter because they knew there was going to be a little confrontation between the two of us or some guy. And he came up to me and he, and he, and we started pushing hands. We started just doing some hand stuff. And, he, and, he, and, then, and we got to be very good friends. And every month I looked forward to meeting him there. And, and he looked forward, I think he looked forward to my coming in because he'd always come around and, you know, we'd stop, we'd stop the show, you know, he'd say, hey, come on, we're in here, change my you know. And, and then one time he said, he said I, can't, I can't touch you. He said, I can't touch you. He said, I'm, I'm taking a special training in Iron Shirt Qigong. And he said, uh, I'll show you when I'm through, though. So I said, okay. So for about three months, four months, uh, you know, we would meet, but we we and he, he, he wouldn't touch. He couldn't he couldn't touch anybody or something. It was very 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 strict training that he had. I mean, very very strange and strict training. And so that and then this one one time he came around and he had a big grin on his face. And he, he had in his hand a, a Chinese chopstick. And and they're, they're so I don't know uh, the Japanese are shorter mostly Japanese, and they come to a point. And the Chinese are longer, and, and they're thicker at the, at the top end, and then they, they just, the same narrow length, but they, they're longer, and they end abruptly. 
a chopstick. Okay. That's what he had in his hand. So he had it in his hand, and the, and the, the end of it came out to here. Like, and he had it in his hand, and he got up in front of me. He just stood in front of me, and he smiled, he smiled at me, and he went, Choom! And he drove it into his throat right here, and it broke. It broke it out. That was his trick. I mean, that was his training. It was all to protect his Adam's apple or something. Right, right, yeah. I didn't ask him. I just said, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and he said, "I could, I could, I could teach you. I could teach you." I said, "I don't want to learn that. I, don't, I can't even, I can't even work with chopsticks and eat them. Yeah, I don't want to be that's breaking them in my throat." That's one of those things you only like screw up one time. <laughs> yeah, that's, all, that's all. But that part right there, uh, yeah. that's where they came. Yeah, yeah. Honest to God. Now. You see somebody just do that, and you say, oh my God, how the hell they do that? Well, I, I know how they did it. I know it took this guy about four months of some strange training. He couldn't have sex with his wife. He couldn't have, uh, uh, he had to get up at a, like certain, certain times, like 1.31 in the morning. Uh, and it had to do with ions in the, in the atmosphere. Oh God, and it was, it was very, very strange and involved training. Well, you know that a lot of martial art could get, get into some very strange training, and you've got to train hard. Anyway, back to Joseph Wong. So that's what I wanted to read. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I know we're going way overboard and everything. Oh, well, I think we're, we're still pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Hand method, the first stage. Hand method refers to the execution of techniques by the body's extremities. Techniques include punching, blocking, kicking, striking, locking, shina. Stretching is important and movements are usually large, fast, and forceful. All hard external schools stay within the bounds of the hand method. Right? All the ones that you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You you teach it now. Yeah, that's what you teach. Yeah, I teach people you teach punch, it. kick, and and and, all and, and, stuff. and 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 protect themselves, protect defend themselves, yeah. fight and fight. Beat the bully. All hard external schools stay within the bounds of the hand method. For martial artists trained in these schools, the practice of Tai Chi, defined by its principles, not its forms, meaning. Forms, when I use the term forms, it's a, usually one whole repetition of postures from beginning to end. I only use form as one, that's the only meaning I, I use it for. And I usually capitalize it if I write it. Okay. Because I want people to know that this is a special term. Right. But other Taiji teachers use the term forms for those individual postures within. Uh, like the white crane gotcha. spreads its wings. Yeah, yes. uh, but I, I, I don't use the term forms for those because it's too misleading right. with what I consider forms to be, which is the big overall. Yeah, that's what I, I that was my understanding of them too. It's just like you, you have a form, it's one big thing yeah. instead of the uh, 30 some odd m motions that make up that form. Right. Because, you know, some forms or just a, an assortment, a collection of the different moves within a, a certain rank or whatever. And then some are like, if I see, like it tells almost like a story from point A to point B. And it just kind of, for me, it depends on which martial art to have that. I have a mixture of both because I'm a mixed martial artist. But let me ask you something. When, when you do, and you, you have several forms then. Yes, yeah. Yeah. we have 13 forms. When you do a form, you do it by yourself. Yes. Yeah, so it's a solo form. Yes. There are some forms that can be done with two people, but um, I'm, I'm still exploring. Uh, so, like, yeah. so that's a, that's, those are two-person forms you're talking about? Yeah. For most of yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I do my Tai Chi form, and I, I, out of the many that I've learned, I, I, I've chosen the one that I learned from this 90-year-old teacher in China. But I also do Liu Hao Ba Fa Chuan, and that is another internal martial art form. 
And I also do, I learned from my teacher in China. He taught me because he was, he were, wasn't a Tai Chi master, he was a master of martial arts. And what he was a lineage holder in and a master, and in China he was considered, he had a title. Uh, uh, but, 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 I slipped my mind. But it's, it's held by the, the Chinese government, the communist government, it, it, really special people in arts. And he was because he was the lineage holder of Tang Pai. This is a Tang system. Yeah. And the Tang system goes back to the first Tang emperor's third son, Tang Li. And, ta and uh, not, that's uh, 1,200 years, 900 years, something. It's a long time ago. And those little kids I told you about in the street, oh, yeah. they know Tang Li like we would know Bruce Lee. Okay. I mean, it's, it's like, like yeah. he, he, was, he was around with my grandfather or something. He was around hundreds of years ago. Uh, but to them, the martial law is present with them all the time. Uh, like, you know, oh God, I, I can't explain. So, so uh, where are we? So, okay, the forms. Uh, so when he says here, it's defined by his principles. Not its forms, not, not not those individual postures, not those individual techniques. When I do my form, I do it with an invisible partner. I, I, I'm, I'm never alone. So I do a solo, it looks solo because I'm doing it by myself, but I'm doing it with someone. And, and, and my, my job with a form, once you learn that basic rote choreography of a form, then you have to start to do other things. And that one other thing that you have to do very important is to start to know enough about function or the martial purpose. Fundamental is, is the uh, how, the how. How do you do this form? And, and you what forms that you do, there's special things you do how. And you don't do the how like that in other forms. And then there are the techniques. And the techniques are the function, and the function can change. And you, you can, you know, you can do the same thing, and you can do a different hold or a different punch or a different something, but you're doing the same basic form that, or, or posture. And, uh, and so, the more that you know about that, the more you know about the martial, the more that you are actually dealing with an entity. I call it the I.O., the invisible opponent, because you have an invisible person that's doing something to you that makes you go here, huh? right. or he does something that makes you go here. So you got to know, why am I doing these movements? Otherwise, I'm just jerking my hands around. Right. Huh? I mean, you can be doing all kinds of shit with that, right? Yeah, right. All right? I mean, who knows what you're doing? But when you know what you're doing, and someone else has an idea of what you're doing, I never see people, I can, I can watch people do a form, and I say, no. You know that they're at this level, right? Wait, are we shutting off here? No, I, th I thought I saw it blink out of the corner of my eye. Uh, That's good. No, you, you, yes, your machine. So you keep yeah. your eye on it because I think we got way overboard here. But okay, so l let me finish this before that thing uh, we run out of time or something. Uh, so anyway, the solo, the form, so that solo form. Uh, that the, you know, okay, it. it it's defined by its principles, not its form. Principles to me are the fundamentals. Represents a breakthrough. Okay, let me read that again. For martial artists trained in the hard, in the hard, external, Waigong hand method schools. When they get to this point, for the martial arts trained in these schools, the practice of Tai Chi, and that doesn't mean it doesn't really mean the Tai Chi the Tai Chi form, but the Tai Chi principles, defined by its principles, not its forms, represents a breakthrough. But where you learn the principles would be in a Tai Chi form, the doorway to the second stage of development. Unfortunately, and this is true, this is so goddamn true. Unfortunately, most Tai Chi players also remain at this first level. For the performance of form and push hands will simply be the exercise of technique until players learn to apply the master key. The that's what he talks about earlier in this. is the application of the eight trigrams and the five elements or the Taiji diagram, that diagram right there on that little mirror. Those, those little lines around are okay. the eight trigrams. Huh? Okay. 
in the center would usually be a yin yang symbol. The yin yang is the, the tai chi, you know, the, the, right, the right. dual duality. When that, and that is the basis of tai chi, is really that symbol. And then how, how do you apply that to what you're doing is, is, is really the study of tai chi, the study of tai chi. When you have, when you apply the, the master key, they thereby achieve the breakthrough to the next stage. Really quickly, I'm going to read this torso method. The second stage, the hallmark of the second stage is the use of torso method. That's what I am trying to learn and, and, and pass on. Torso method is characterized by the use of the body, specifically the waist and spine, to initiate and empower the movements of the arms and the legs. They don't move independently. They don't do anything independently. That is, the torso learns to lead all movement. In the first stage, muscular dynamics and independent movement generate force. In the hand method, the first stage, muscular dynamics and independent movements generate force. Boom, boom, boom. Huh? In Tai Chi, it's, this would be this would be coming from some other place. This punch, and while that's coming, something's happening to this arm because it's connected to the spine. So it's doing something over here, or it's doing something in conjunction with this one. They're always matching. The body's always moving from here. The, the term torso is also misleading to me, but I know what it means. But I, I say waist. Okay. So the waist, oh, and, and the waist doesn't move <coughs> on its own. It moves with the hip joints. So if the hip joints move, the waist moves, and then so it's all movement from the waist and the knees. Forward motion, backward motion is the knees. Torquing motion, turning motion is from the hip joints. So it's really the hip joints and the knees that do all the movement. And they're doing it together. There's no, and you don't step with one foot, you step empty and then both, then the whole body moves forward. You step back empty, and then the whole body moves forward. One foot doesn't. One foot doesn't step, and then the other foot steps. And the first stage, muscular dynamics. Sixth stage. In the second stage, suppleness, connectedness, inner movement, such as breathing, and the spiral motion pictured in the Tai Chi diagram, unlock the power of innate energy, or Chi. What do torso method movements look like? No parts of the body move independently. The movement of any part is contingent on the match motion of all other parts, and all other parts are continuously alternating between the extremes of yin and yang. It took me years to understand that, but, and I still don't understand it. But anyway, only those who reach this stage can truly be said to be practicing Tai Chi. Yet, there, these are few indeed. Most Tai Chi players are working on the principles that define the torso method, as I am. But the breakthrough that marks mastery of this stage is elusive. It is easy to deceive yourself about progress at this level. Tai Chi, forms with long ex tai Chi players with long experience. Tai, I'm sorry, Tai Chi forms can appear very graceful and connected especially when performed by players with long experience. Careful study, however, will reveal hands and other parts moving independently or stagnating and failing to change as weight shifts and the waist moves. Just the end of this, this paragraph. That's, that's what Tai Chi is. That's what I am trying to, I'm trying to master. Uh, I, I don't think I'll, I'll reach that point in this incarnation. But hopefully I'll get another one where I won't have to start from scratch again. Yeah, that's some true. kind of way yeah, out of yeah. I hope so. If there's a God in heaven, that's what he's going to help me do. Or if there's a devil, whichever way, way I go. <laughs> Either you're, way, you're spending uh, eternity learning Tai Chi. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So th th this, is, th this is what bothers me the most. And what bothers me the most is that Tai Chi players don't, don't understand it. They're still doing hand method. And the people, Kung Fu people who do head method don't understand that if they slow it down, they're not doing Tai Chi. Tai Chi is not That's slow like Kung, Kung Fu. Kung, yeah. it's, it's, you've got to learn to, to manifest and, 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 and gather your, all of your body's energy into one and act as a solid unit. Or as Mr. Joe would say, the hand has no independent movement.
Hand has no movement. It cannot move on its own in Tai Chi. Phew. That's Bruce Lee. Yeah. But Bruce Lee did the same thing. I mean, when you really... And where I, where I really learned, where, where this meant, meant not so much until I began judging. That's where I learned. Because in ju tournament judging, you have to you have to look at oh I I've, I've been in weekend tournaments where it's it's like all yang form all one style same style you see the same thing over and over and over and over and you got ten people in strings and sometimes it's ten, ten you, might, you might have thirty people in one particular competition and you've got to determine as a judge with three and a half minutes maybe of watching each one. Which of these ten are going to work to be one, two, and three? Which is going to get gold, silver, and, and bronze? What is it that distinguishes them? And this, this was my Bible to do that. And I got to see it over and over and over again. And that I could do it was another thing, but I could see it in other people. Taiji people can't see it. They can't see it in themselves. They don't see where they're doing independent movement. Training in it, beginning study, is difficult. But once you get there, I tell people, I ask me, how long will it take me to learn this form, this Tai Chi form? I say, well, three to four years if you do like one class a week and you practice every day. You can shorten it. You can lengthen it. I have a student that's been, well, I don't want to talk about it. But, uh, you, know, I have, you know, it takes some people a long time. It takes some people, they, they can do it quicker because they spend hours a day. But they all get to the same place, which is the end of a choreographed movement form. It's rote learning. You learn to do this posture, and out of that comes this posture, and out of this comes that posture, and out of this comes that posture. When can you start to, to rearrange those postures? When can they come about when you need them, rather than in their order? Uh, are we? We're good, man. You know what? We could be doing this all day. Yeah. I don't know if they can do it all yeah. day. But this has been great. We're going to be doing a lot more um, with Lamont because he's very informative. He knows a whole lot of stuff. Man, like I said, I could do this all day, man. I could just sit here and listen to him talk. And I know he can talk because... <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to the end of my talking. I'm getting, I'm getting it to the end of my talking. And, yeah, yeah. and, and now, just now, all of your followers here said, oh, no. That's the end. <laughs> please have that. Michael, please have that be the end no. of this guy here. Yeah. No, we're going to come back here. We still got to <laughs> talk about this place, this awesome place. So be sure to join us next time for the next Dragon Yon, the next time I got Lamont. Yep. Okay, I'm Seafood Mike. This has been Dragon Yon. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, all those great things. Check him out on his website. We're going to have links to all of everything after this video. You guys have been great. I'm, like I said, I'm Stephen Mike. This is Lama, and this is the Calligraphy Studio Black if Bamboo you, Pavilion. If you've watched it to the end, I thank you very much. Yeah, because you guys are awesome. Yes. Yeah, right. so. <laughs> Bye.